Here we have a 34-year-old female medical secretary who has been wearing soft monthly contact lenses for over 10 years. She's come to see you due to contact lens discomfort and dry eyes. She has also been experiencing visual fatigue at the end of the day. First, you need to carry out your clinical examination of the patient. During the interview, you ask her the famous triaging questions recommended by the JUICE 2 Consensus Conference and look for dry eye syndrome risk factors. Wearing contact lenses is a risk factor for this patient. Her OSDI score is 15. During your eye examination, you notice that her hypermetropia is undercorrected by her glasses. This is confirmed by your refraction test using the fogging technique and cyclopedic drops. Intraocular pressure is normal. Your slit lamp examination at a high magnification reveals blocked meibomian glands and telangiectasia along the free margin. When you palpate the eyelid, you notice poor myoboma expression. When you instill a drop of fluorescin, the Mark's line is clearly visible, but the cornea remains fluo-negative. Breakup time is between 7 and 8 seconds for both eyes, and blinking is correct. Contact lenses are worn correctly. The lenses are the right shape and the patient is using and taking care of them properly. This patient will undergo ocular service analysis using the Lacry Diag. It's a quick examination that can easily be delegated to a colleague. The Lacry Diag can be used to analyse the various layers of the tear film. Non-invasive breakup time or NIBUT is subnormal in this patient, as is interferometry and tear meniscus height. The mybography images show us that several mybomian glands are atrophied. You therefore diagnose mixed dry eye syndrome in this female contact lens wearer with mild mybomian gland dysfunction and undercorrected hypermetropia. Patient education on both dry eye syndrome and how to manage it is essential. I strongly encourage you to use personalised information sheets or dedicated websites such as mydryeyedisease.com. The use of Lacry Diag photos, particularly mybography images, plays an essential educational role for better treatment compliance. First, you will modify the patient's prescription to achieve better correction of the hypermetropia. You can prescribe preservative-free artificial tears alongside eyelid care. You will also educate the patient about blinking. You can also suggest adjustments to her contact lens use, such as changing the replacement frequency or the cleaning product. You see her again for a checkup in a few months. Her symptoms have clearly improved as her OSDI score is 5 and her contact lenses are more comfortable. Upon clinical examination, you note improved myburn expression and quality. The free margins are less inflamed and the tear film is more stable. You therefore advise her to continue with her eyelid hygiene and to use artificial tears as needed. In conclusion, ocular surface analysis with the Lacry Diag is doubly beneficial. Firstly, it benefits patients because it helps diagnose dry eye syndrome and assess the selected treatment. It also plays a clear educational role and improves treatment compliance. For doctors, it provides greater understanding of dry eye syndromes and enables standardisation of medical practices. We know that the last JUICE 2 consensus conference recommended the use of NIBUT. It is also clearly beneficial for clinical research. Focus on dry eye syndrome and contact lenses. Dry eye syndrome can occur in any contact lens wearer for a variety of reasons. Firstly, because wearing contact lenses can damage the tear film, cause chronic inflammation and modify the tear composition, resulting in hyperosmolarity. Cleaning products can also have a toxic effect on the surface, and patients who wear lenses can present corneal hyperesthesia after several months or years. So any pre-existing pathology or additional event can trigger dry eye syndrome in a patient who wears contact lenses.